budget forum and maybe kind of circle around and see if that's coming up next week. Um, kind of revisit about what are the messages we want to deliver, how do we want to deliver them, you know, do we want to do a presentation, do we just want to open up a little, Tom, you did share what, there's been no questions submitted as of? As of yesterday, I, uh, if, if there are, they came in today. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, surprisingly, shockingly quiet. I, I don't have a reason for it. Do we have a plan B if there are no questions? Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I just think it's like, like how, how do we fill two hours of, of time? Bingo. So, with the money. <laughs> There'll be questions. There'll be questions? Yeah, but two hours is a long time for and, random and, questions. And, and there may be random send, questions um, for the audience, which right. is less time to kind of prepare for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we so prefer we, them up front to the extent they're detailed and they require a detailed answer just to make sure we can research it and be in a position to answer it accurately. But, We'll do our best to field them as they come. We were also going to send a power school announcer on Monday so that any um, <coughs> school families who have questions who have not yet submitted them, just to remind them of the link and see if that generates any additional. Yeah, it's very prominently. It's got its own button on, a, on the home page of the town mm, it's pretty uh, obvious. website. It's uh, and there's we a big promoted it through a uh, Facebook page, so I, I don't know what more we can do to kind of get the word out. There's a big <coughs> banner on the school department page, too, that's scrolling through. Um, Reminding them of the date, but I don't think it's it doesn't, to yeah, it doesn't submit questions. Give us a question. Well, I think in the letter in the leader also, it said in there, please submit questions through the budget portal. It just came out today, I think. Or right, but I mean, so it's not just electronic media that it's out true. on. Yeah, we're, we're in print, too. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I did, Peter, grab the presentation that Jody and Sean did last year. Yes. Okay. So um, we, have, we went yesterday, Tom, myself, um, folks from IT, uh, Colette and Kelly, we all went down to check out Wentworth and see how it could work mm -hmm. out. And um, so we're planning on you guys still having a sort of presentation like had been done in the past. And if you want to just take a look at that or give us your talking points, so that way if there are any charts or graphs that need to be generated, we can support you in that. Peter and I did talk, I don't think there's any requirement that you do a presentation that's been the history, short history, albeit, but that's mm -hmm. what we've done in the past. Uh, it, it, but it's always been very, very high level. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, that night is intended, was designed for the people's time, is to talk about what they want to talk about, not us. Right. right. But and I think our presentation is, is three or four slides each. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Ten minutes top. But I think it's also fair mm -hmm. because some changes have already been have happened since first reading. So it might be fair to give a synopsis of what the current state is as of that day with whatever adjustments that have already come in, whether it's insurance or something, as the numbers fill in. You know, um, I, I don't think it's the magic eight ball, but it's at least saying, okay, we're, this is the way we're trending right now. Yeah, and I'll echo Julie's comments. Peter, we stand ready to support you however you, you need it. So, so maybe Joe, you and I can get together maybe soon. Surely <laughs> 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 we can do that. And, but if, if we don't have questions, I mean, if yeah. we don't have questions, could we take some of the questions we've received in the past and just update the answers? Just to, I mean, if they've asked them in the past, maybe they're viable today, and, you know, for this year's budget. Some of them are very specific, but <coughs> there are sure some that would apply to the field. Maybe budget. ones that are common across both years. Well, or maybe you just a process update. What's the, what are next steps? What are the next phases or something? I don't know. I, I, I mean, it is for them, but... You could hold a joint workshop. Yeah. That night, right? <laughs> well, right, I mean... Uh, I, I didn't know if we wanted, because we've, we've had some conversations. I mean, I remember Sean's last year was, you know, he took a little, he didn't talk about the process and kind of the longer term view. Um, and, and I didn't know if we wanted to talk a little bit about that at this time, maybe about um, what we are going to do going forward. I mean, we've kind of talked to you, how do we plan out this soft landing? What does it look like? How do we do it? Right. I don't know if, if that's a place that we can share. We had talked about, is there any reason for this group to continue to meet maybe during the summer or off? Once we get through this hurdle, we'll take some time off to kind of recharge. But then really think about a process of how, how do we kind of map out what the next couple of years are going to be because you've got, we've got, you know, some, you know, on the municipal side, we've got the public safety building, the library, we've got some of those things. We also still have some lingering effects of, of just sort of, you know, the, the funding cuts. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Is there any interest in this group? And if that's something we can commit to as a group and can announce whether that. So I didn't know if we could just take a different direction on this and, and maybe, 
keep it in kind of Sean's vein of an overview, but are there some messages we really want to kind of deliver with this budget this year? Um, I, I think I like the idea of, of this group continuing on maybe less frequently, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love, I love yeah. it you know, every other week, but, but just to sort of keep each other abreast of things that are coming up or um, ways that we can work through some different ideas that, that come up, not necessarily January through May. Mm -hmm. And yeah. bear in mind, we also have, I mean, regardless of what happens November, we typically realign everything after November, whether December or so, I think we realign everything anyway. So if we could maybe leave, I don't want to say the legacy, but a blueprint or a, yeah. here's, where we, here's where we're at right now, here's what we think the next couple steps are for the next group to come in and pick it up and move yeah. it along. Long-range like. facility planning is something that is of collective interest and probably yeah. really requires a, a much deeper conversation about what those priorities are and how they fit together. Okay. And going forward, some conversations about, you know, it's one time, one budget, so how do we balance the needs over time of both, both entities as they kind of move through their cycles? Um, you know, and how do we manage, you know, it, it's, we're probably in this time where revenue is changing, so what does that do and how do we adjust and that type of thing? So I, I don't know if that would, if we announce that, we talked a little bit about that, whether that creates some interest in the community about kind of having that ongoing dialogue. I mean, I personally want to keep it at the 50,000 foot level of saying, yeah. you know, I'm obviously we've got to dive into the detail of this year's budget to some extent to, mm -hmm. you know, and get that out there. That's, I think that's priority one because that's the most pressing thing. Yeah. But I, I do like your, your idea of saying, you know, because the goal here was to kind of be hopefully looking two, three years into the future with these discussions instead of reacting to every single sure. year's budget, you yeah. know. Um, and, you know, now that we're, we've pretty much bottomed out with state volatility for school funding at least. Now, jury's still out on municipal revenue sharing, but... Um, well, and I think the jury's still out with school funding. Uh, so fair enough. Yeah. Well, but the, I think the only place it could go is up. Right. If we're, if right. we're yeah, assuming that we're at the worst case scenario right. with God today, then right. you know, we have a different perspective. And, and maybe that's what we, t we, we talk about is, you know, the stability of a lack of funding, you know. I mean, that is kind of the silver lining of the cloud is that the volatility is somewhat removed now. We could do that incremental planning that we had wanted to do and talked about that. And what that level is, that's probably more for a year-to-year -year discussion, I would think. But. So, Peter, are you saying that you would want to sort of create a, an agenda for the forum that we could advertise ahead of time to mm -hmm. raise interest or...? Well, I mean... That wasn't necessarily thinking that, but if we're not getting any questions, <laughs> you know, that's kind of not, not necessarily. Could be a good omen. No, it was more of uh, really of a question about how do we build the where we are? Because I think wherever we end up with the numbers, it, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a tough conversation or right. where we are. And, you know, how do we continue that dialogue of how do we keep both sides that feel passionately about this issue? kind of engage and still be respectful and, and civil about the process and try to understand both sides so we can get, you know, I mean, our goal should be still to get this passed the first time through. I think that's, that's going to, we all got to hang together to do that. So how, how do we do that? Yep, yep. Um, so I don't, I don't know if we want to talk about those things that just take it, kind of build on the work of the Scarborough Kindness Project and others and say, let's open the dialogue and that, that type of thing, do a high level view. I know Sean last year, you know, kind of built on the three five. I always get that mixed up. But One, three, three, five, five. Seven, Sean, Sean, we had to keep we make sure his time was very yeah, limited. I, did, I yeah. went back and I saw a few yeah. emails from yeah. Tom saying, yeah. again, just reminding you, it's ten minutes to buy. It's like two squats. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, okay. So I think you know this is. I think Julie handed yeah. you this. Yeah. This was Sean's. I don't see mine in here. Oh, did I not pull the whole thing? So we were trying to find 12 it. 12 or so are shown. And uh, <laughs> I think I had like five. Yeah. I, I think I recall yours was just like what he said. Is that what No, I was first. Ladies first. Oh, oh, first. okay. All right. Yeah. Um, it wasn't so in the integrated I presentation or two separate ones? Yeah, they must be. What I, I was looking in, in my old okay. file from last year, so what I pulled was yeah, that, which I think may have been what Sean sent us to build off of or something. I don't know. Obviously, I didn't get the whole thing. So I'll look at uh, You may have the okay. whole final version. I'll circulate it for us. Yeah. The only other question I get, too, is that, you know, actually, 
you know, both your joint presentations that you did. Do we think that's a, it was a pretty good audience that tunes into that, or is some of that stuff worth repeating? Did our, did our Julie and my uh, yeah, collaboration? Yeah. Are you asking whether it was well viewed well? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we no, 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 no. That was, <laughs> no, no, no. That. Whether, Would it be a total repeat for most people that, that come, or do you think a lot of people haven't really seen well, Frankly, at this show? juncture, you haven't moved the needle much. You've talked a lot, but uh, other than some of the reductions that were delivered by the school department last yeah. week, uh, that's really, and, and that's not going to move the needle enough, obviously. So there's I not know, much change since that. that point. Right, right. But, but between but now and then, we'll have, we'll have had. Well, we've had, what, we'll have at least one or two finance, maybe? But not Between now and then? No, 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 it's next Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> here, here, here. So this, this is, is it. This is the one. This is it. This is the joint one, right. So then the question is, does it bear repeating to talk about just, just some of the budget drivers or some of the yeah. you know, high-level items that, other, that people might have missed? My sense is, and this may be completely inaccurate, that if you're making the effort to come to the budget forum, you've probably already heard something about that. I feel like you already know that. Because it's kind of a, okay. it's yeah, a commitment to a higher level but of the agree, but we'll you send it. Just yeah. You might have a slide or two that yeah. I mean, you like and grab it. I think it's a good idea to, and to encourage. run through the budget version because, you know, I mean, it, again, some of the intangibles yeah. like the insurance, we know now. So so we can, we can at least update those mm -hmm. and say, here are the remaining budget drivers that are out there, you know, and then maybe a plan of how we're going to try and address those issues between now and, and the vote and the second, well, between now and second reading, not between now and the vote, but between now and second reading. So, so on the, so on the school side, are you guys comfortable with some of the things that have been put on the table? I mean, that, can they, that's ahead of your second reading though, right? The budget of forums? What, mm -hmm. what things on the table? You mean to talk about at, on Wednesday night? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> some, some of the, yeah, okay. I think for us, it's going to be a, a very sort of general, Presentation. I don't think we're getting into the nitty gritty of a presentation with re specific reductions on Wednesday night, are we? No, I, 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 that's up to you guys. I, I guess my only point was to say we have had updates. Right, right, right. I think that's, yeah. I think that's important because I don't know yeah. that people, those only came about in the last week. Right. So I think those are absolutely sort of top of the list of things mm -hmm. that should be highlighted and talked about. But like Tom said, it's it's not getting us to where we need to be. Right. So then, obviously, someone's going to ask that question. So, so what else? Is, so what's next? Yeah. And that's yeah. where that discussion goes. We've got more meetings. We've got more opportunities. We've got more issues to look at. Here are the remaining drivers that we've got to focus on. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've got here are the dates of meetings. Come on in, listen, whatever, and we'll have something that's going to be ready for second reading. I mean, we, that's the normal process. I mean, I, I'm, I wish we could report out better numbers, <laughs> but if we don't have numbers to report, at least an update in the process of what we do have and where we're at, and then let the questions come, and I'm sure we'll get questions just like that. So, you know. And, and we have to remember that that's the point of, of this right. whole forum. Right. Yep. right. Instead of us continuing to sort of yeah. talk, right. talk yeah. to people, let them... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I thought, like, like I said, a five-minute update of here's where we're at now, here's what's left. Okay, ask your questions. <laughs> right. you know? Yep. And then, and then, really, the second agenda item on here too is then to talk a little bit about okay, so sort of, and then we can circle back to the, the talking point because do we have any thought of where we want to be? I mean, where we think you know the end point of where we need to get to, and you know, is it is it where we sit now is it is it a different number? If it is a different number, um, can we Wednesday night commit? The, much to Chris's point, okay, this is still a work in progress, and our goal is to get to a certain sort of target number that we can deliver. I, that we is that, is that a is that a fair conversation for for this group? Um, I, I was supposed to say, I think it's always a work in progress. You know, yeah. I don't think it's yeah. ever final until we get to that second reading. Um, but for us, I know that's what we have been doing for the last week and we'll oh, continue yeah. to do for the next week is try to figure out where. Yeah, what's well, still working and how do we... Yeah, to the point of it never being final, we're always every day <clears throat> assessing our resources and assessing our needs. And what I um, have been thinking about 
on the school side of things is um, possibly curtailing any non-essential spending for the rest of FY17 so that we can try to generate as much fund balance as possible in FY17 um, to be able to help us as we plan forward, not only for FY18, but for FY19. And so uh, Tom and I have talked a little bit about that and what that could mean for us in terms of just setting up our community for a more balanced budget over the next several years. That's one, yeah, one so that bit that of it. Is that something like to be talked about Wednesday night? Kind of that, that concept? Yeah. I mean, so I'm in position to release that Tuesday, right, to your staff? I, I'm planning to, or thinking about having this conversation with my leadership council on Tuesday. So, I could certainly talk to that on Wednesday night. If, yeah, if you <coughs> well, if not, we could pull it. With that. Mm -hmm. Again, in that packaging the message, mm -hmm. you know, I think it'd be really important to, you know, we hear you. You know, I mean, there's there's different viewpoints. We, we've heard all viewpoints. What we're trying to do is, is find a way to navigate the next couple of years, which are going to be challenging for all of us on, on, on both sides. I mean, it's, it strikes me there's a couple of <coughs> things that might be good coming from the two of you at that meeting. I, I think I've heard consensus and certainly speak up if I've heard it wrong, but we're in this together and we want to finish it together. So are they kind of reiterating that commitment? And now's where it gets touched. Now's where we can uh, get divided. So I think just reiterating that kind of commitment to the process is sure. important. And I think there's a recognition around this table that where we're at is not acceptable. That, that That's not going to fly. If we truly expect and want to have success in the first round where we're at today isn't enough. Where we end up, I don't think we can say right at this point. But I think a recognition would be important for folks to know that um, we have more work to do. Right. Is that fair? Does everyone agree with absolutely. those statements? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I've, I've, from my own kind of personal approach, have jotted down a couple of, I guess, you know, factors, if you will, that we can try and utilize. And it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm saying things like I've got in things like increased use of fund balance. I don't have a number to that. I'm not saying like add another 150,000. I think that's the, one of the discussions I was hoping to have in this group is what level do we want to do that, A, and if we do, to what extent? And once we have that shift, do we know what the impact is going to be in that and what that means? Is it, do we have to adjust our, are we going to pull our stops out on, on our policy that we did? Or are we going to not touch fund balance because we're not comfortable with doing that because we want it to be there over time? And if we don't do that, you know, what, what's, what are the other options? Um, um, we could do more liberal uh, projections of excise tax or valuation. You know, but there are consequences to doing all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I, I was hoping that we'd be able to at least put this stuff out on the table and say, because some of this is school driven, some of it's not. But if it's if it's all of us together, I think it's important for you guys to hear the things that we've got to do as a town side, because that way it's not you're feeling like you're shouldering the majority of the of the burden of closing the gap, or we're doing yeah. the majority of it. You know? Maybe the way to address that is to just mention by reference the, the sort of areas on the revenue side, for instance, that excise is worth looking back at. Uh, homestead exemption is an area that I, I think we should look at. There's some extra resources potentially there. Last week we heard potentially some grant monies from the state in support of the MLTI. I don't know enough about that, but that's a point that's worth checking back in on. Mm -hmm. I think that's safe territory just to say these are areas we're watching and we'll likely make some adjustments without right. saying what they are because we don't know. Right, and I think to your point though, Peter, is we, you know, I, rather than I would think instead of it, right now our goal is 3%. That's our stated targeted goal. Yeah. Um, I, I think yes. I, I think to get there, um, and I, I'll wait to see how it shakes out, but I think to get there we're talking about some kind of reduction in services on some level. I'm not necessarily comfortable with that personally, but if we're going to hold to that number, we've got to know what the ramifications of that are. And then if, if, if that number's not going to hold, what's tolerable for us? Right. What, what is something that we can adjust and what can we settle on. Yeah, and I think, that, I think it's a pretty narrow corner between what that sort yep. of the low and the high of where right. that is and how right. we package that. Yeah, right. I don't know if it's helpful to this group and then to, in the budget forum, but to get to your 3% using the mid-range um, valuation estimate, you're looking at about $2.1 million swing. What was that? 2.1. 2.1. Yeah. 
2.1 on the mid range is 3%, three percent. Three and a half would be um, about 1.8, 1.7, 1.79. So 1.8 gets you three to five percent. So that may be helpful for yeah, folks to kind of wrap their brain right around what is the what's yeah. the challenge ahead of us. Yeah. Chris, to your point of fund balance, um, I'll offer my two cents, and it, I think it'd be far better not to touch it any further because what we've all recognized is we'll mm -hmm. have a similar challenge next year, mm -hmm. and we're going to need all the resources we can get to get through next year. So through curtailments, through not hitting it further this year to make this budget process, this one, go easier. Mm -hmm. um, all of that, I think, speaks to prudent management and planning for that rainy day that we know is coming. So that you may yeah. be able to sidestep that, not sidestep it, but speak to it and uh, in a forward-thinking manner as opposed to we're going to see what more we can squeeze out of it for this year to, to get through this this validation vote. Yeah, and I'm comfortable with that as long as we have that discussion and we understand that collectively and, and we can, you know, express, look, we looked at that. That's clearly an option that we had. We didn't, we're going to choose to pursue the direction we're going to pursue collectively because we talked about it and we figured here's the, here's what the potential outcomes are. This is why we're at the point we're at right now. Because anybody can come back and say, well, you should use more fund balance. You should always fund balance. I mean, there's always going to be that pushback counterpoint. Uh, as long as we can justify the that we've looked at it, we've explored it, and then explain why we're doing what we're doing. I mean, that, I think that's the an aberration. Thing. I, you know, that would be a real viable option. But mm -hmm. we know that there's a similar challenge next year. Maybe yeah, next year. Yeah. Really imprudent to to raid the biggie bank today. You can't fund balance. Fund balance is a one time. It's not a renewable oh, uh, resource. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But we also <laughs> changed our fund balance policy to increase our minimum. So we made it even tougher. Or we did. We did. Great. So, I, and that's why I was saying before. Do we, you know, do we look at spending that? And if we do that, there's also other ramifications for that. But that's more of a, it's more of a council finance discussion, I think. But but, but I'm saying it's, it, that's a, I mean, if we decide that's what we want to do, that's an option. You know, we just got to talk about it and vet it and figure out the direction to go. In. And I think for, I don't want to speak for Kate and Julie, but on our on under the school budget. Um, no, I didn't say on our side. That didn't sound very. <laughs> um, we we have asked and now continue to sort of go back and really sort of tweak. We we like to make Kate as uncomfortable as possible in her projection. I'm glad that hasn't changed. Oh, it hasn't changed. <laughs> so so there's Sorry, not as much leeway or fun balance at the end. Mm -hmm. And so it gets very tricky on from, we can't spend, even if we get more, you know, we oh, can't I, spend right. more than what we have budgeted. So if we're sure. budgeting razor thin. No, I'm, I'm very much well, aware of that. I, and I guess I guess my point was to say, you know, we, moved, we also took the step this year to move things from CIP into operational. Mm -hmm. Is that the right year to do that? And, you know, we know what those are. They're the same drivers they are every year. And as long as, we, as long as we're aware of that and it's not a surprise, maybe this isn't the year to do that. I'm not suggesting that we take it all out. I'm just saying that's another option that we have that we can talk mm -hmm. about and what the impact of that's going to be. Because it will reduce the ask, but it will also require a, a, a heavier burden on fund balance again at the end of the year. That conversation is bigger picture, forward thinking, right. uh, it's recognition that we've got some things to do, but conversation around is this the time to do it? Right. Can we afford to do it all at once? Right. right. The other point that we'd like to... Uh, just we'd like to bring up at some point is uh, in the event, Plan B. unlikely as it may be, but in the event we do get more state support for education no. um, because uh, I'm quite certain you all will be making final budget decisions and the voters will actually probably vote on it before we ever know anything from the state. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it, we'd love to have some conversation around what to do in that event. Yeah. and. Uh, there will be likely a second ballot question that the voters would, would uh, agree to. Um, on how the funds would be used? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so decide that up front. And to the extent that you can get through that today, that's another point that you could raise before that these are things that you were prepared to do. Yeah. So now, do the vote, I didn't know that it was the voters that decide that. I thought it was just language in the warrant. I, There's two pieces to it. And this is, um, I 
brought the document that MSMA sent us, and I guess. Let's not go to the, yeah, no. It's, um, it, there are two pieces to the process, but there is a statute in place that says in the event that subsidy changes after you've already passed your budget, because you have this public vote, there has to be some mechanism for you to accept that money and decide what to do with it. And so the idea is to know up front what the plan is. Yeah, so if you do nothing, it goes to fund balance. It comes right. in as an unexpected revenue. Right. right. You can't use it. Utilize if you want to spend it for something, right. or you want to have it go to the bottom line and reduce property tax rate, and the uh, timing, you need to say so. And the timing could work, that it could be factored into the mill rate for... Oh, we'll certainly know that before commitment comes mm -hmm. before right. early August. But my, yeah. My, yeah. My, my personal opinion is, is I don't. I, I, that's a gamble in my mind because if we come in at let's say I'm just going to throw numbers out there, it's not real. But we come in at 3.6, and we say there's a chance that whatever extra money comes in from the state, it might really be 3.4. So we think it's really going to be 3.4. Well, you can't attribute a number to it, right? Though. So I, I would I, I would prefer the money's going to come in. It will be utilized at some point, whether it's this year or next year. I would I just I'm always cautious about committing those funds to try and have an impact this year without a knowing what they are, knowing the extent or how we would you know just arbitrarily say it's going to go right to, to tax tax relief. I'd rather put it into the back into the reserve fund, and then next year when we have this very same discussion. That, that fund is going to be increased by X amount that we receive so from the state, and we can utilize it. Then we can make a decision on it. You, you know what I mean? That's but one of the choices. That's, right, so that's one of the choices, but at right. least putting that language in up front gives us still that option. I think we only have to vote on it if we want to utilize it this year. Otherwise, I think it defers right to fund balance automatically because it's not appropriated and then it's available for next year. Is that correct or is that not correct? I believe if you do nothing, it would just be unexpected revenue and it would go unbalanced. But if you put the verbiage in the this year, you then have still have that option yeah. to carry yeah. it so next year for other, other options. But it may be an important thing for the public to tell them that you're, we're thinking of this right. and yeah. we're being really prudent important. with it. You know, right. Right. you're getting hit if it doesn't come through. If there is some additional funding, then do they see it? And I think you know, I think that, that public relations piece mm -hmm. is that because what we want and what we want to be able to do is not have the divisiveness that we had several years ago. Mm -hmm. How do we get everybody's in this together right. if there is right. extra revenue? And it doesn't have to be all or nothing. I mean, we could talk about a, a certain portion goes yeah. into fund balance and a certain yeah. portion goes back to taxpayer relief. And I, and I, I, and I, I think that would be pretty, pretty specific about it. I think yeah. in, in the guessing, you could say, if I'm not mistaken, you could say, you know, anything up to and including an extra $200,000 would go to um, fund balance, and then above that it would go to tax relief, or you could split it. I'd recommend percentages because we're not going to know what that number is. Right. As soon as you start yeah, introducing I, I, numbers, what if it's $2 million? Right. I mean, I mean, to, yeah, but that's, I mean, that's, yeah. I like it, but Personally, I think that's a gimmick, right? It's pay me now or pay me later. We're going to have access to whatever funds come in next year anyway. So I, I'd hate to I, I'd hate to try and overthink it this year, and at the at the expense of not bridging this 2.1 worst case or best case or whatever this million dollar gap. I mean, I think it's cause, because it's an intangible, right? So if we're hoping if we're throwing it out there, yes, we've evaluated it. Yes, there's a, we could have used it that way, um, but if it comes in and it's higher, we're still going to have access to it next year. But you know what but, I mean? but if you're at 3.8 or yeah. whatever the number is, you're yeah. not at 3 percent. It might be really important yeah. for voters to know that anything that comes in is going to go to the bottom line. Yeah, that I think it's. A, I agree with Tom. I think it's a nod to our community for their for their anticipated support. Um, and and if we do realize more revenue than we anticipated, I think it. I think it's healthy. I think it's a healthy gesture. And, and you said they could actually vote on it, whether they. So they can see a second question. It would be the do you approve the school budget the validation bill question, if you will, and then a second question on in the having them direct us or agree to uh, this is what we do in the event of excess funding. Right. I don't think it's a you know pick A, B, or C though. I think we would say this community right. or this this group has decided that if we get right. additional funding, right. we will use it to do X. And do you agree, yes or no? Yes, correct. You couldn't really take a poll right. you know, to see what the. Yeah. Bill is but you'd also want to, wouldn't you have to put something in that language too that say, is this resolution fails? Or so if they might say, no, we don't approve this, it automatically reverts to fund balance at that point anyway, right? 
it's not like we lose the money. The money comes in, we just can't use it. Yeah, this year. Right, that's you just haven't yeah. made a choice about where it's going in the current year. Right. Gives you more flexibility on what to do with it in the event that mm -hmm. this magical thing might happen. Well, mm -hmm. and I mean, you know, we talk about it being magical, and, and <laughs> who knows? But never has the has Augusta agreed on the number that the budget that the governor mm -hmm. gives in the budget the first time. It's always more than that number. So we base our budget on his number, but that's not where it ever ends. So the question is, we have no idea where it may end this right. year. And it, or if it will have any impact because we're already a minimum receiver. If it's not a significant amount, right. it's not right. really moving our needle. It has to be over $730,000 for us to see a penny. I'd also like to add never in the history of this town we were passed a full a first reading budget without modifications, but that's just me. Um, so is that the way the formula works, that we'd have to get over $730,000 to actually have the minimum we were receiver? At, yeah, because yeah. we were originally scheduled to receive 1.4, but then because of the 33% special education requirement in the in the law, it increased, it increased our subsidy to 2.1, which is a difference of 730, if my memory is correct, roughly, give or so take the it out getting much more than 700 is small. It's hard to say. I mean, it really is going the to depend on what, the the, yeah, and what happens with the, the biennium budget, okay. but then the also. The competing proposal from the Democrats has funding at 55%, funded. and that could produce right. and there are something in excess of that. And, and even if, if the, the Democrats, um, their, their budget proposal doesn't fly, there are people on both sides of the aisle who are agreeing that 55% needs to be funded for education. It's just a matter of how to get there. Right. And and the 48 changes that were proposed in the formula, no one is agreeing to, uh, is my understanding, or at least no majority is agreeing. <laughs> so conceptually, though, I, I don't know if this, this group can, you know, I think Tom, if we're closing in on time frames to make decisions. Mm -hmm. I, I think Chris had a suggestion that it, it just it just goes to fund balance. I, mean, I think that's right, right? Yeah. yeah. That that yep. would be one position. Yep. Another position is that we talk about some portion of it maybe going back to the taxpayer if in fact <coughs> there's anything. Uh -huh. yep. And so I, I don't know where people come down on that. I, I, I'm kind of more in the other court of saying I think just if we're going to go out and say this is a partnership and we need you and you know, we're working as best we can to try to get this in that range that, you know, we think is passable the first read. Um, but if things change, here's, you know, we will share that. So I, that's where I would be. So I don't know how other people... So does that would, have a percentage breakdown for you? Or? I, I, it, it would probably be a percentage breakdown. I haven't gotten there yet. 50-50 <laughs> or 60-40 or 70-30, but... The only I time is that if it helps, it may not. The only time we did this before was in 2013. It was before there's legislation that it actually allows us to ask this question of voters. And at that time, uh, we received 788,000 and change after the fact. And so we went back to the voters in July with approval in hand and had them approve some portion of that, 520 of that, go to offset the main PERS cost. I think it was the first year that we mm -hmm. picked up the local cost of the teacher retirement. And then the balance went to reducing the property tax. So what was, what was that ratio of cost? I think, I don't, that was a real number. I mean, that's a real number, that was a real number, and that's just the product of the two. Yeah. Um, but we had we knew what that that revenue was going to be. The difference yeah. we built right. those numbers, right? And I think right. percentage-wise. Well, and, and we had a up. we had a fixed cost that we were going to be presented the bill for, which was main purse, which we hadn't budgeted for because right. the word on the street when we passed our budget right. was, oh, that's never going to happen. So we took the chance and didn't put it into our budget yeah. for expenditures. It happened, but they sent us more money to compensate. Exactly. That. Mm -hmm. So that right. was right. accommodation. So, so there, it's a little bit of a different different scenario where we couldn't operate business as usual without that $500,000. Um, I think in, in these circumstances, what we're saying is we're going to generate a budget through which we can you know, provide our services and our programs, and then if we get additional funding, it's going to be over and above that. I'd like the suggestion of some sort of split between property tax relief and 
having money go to fund balance right. for future use, future discussion of how to use it and when to use it. I think that gives your biggest political bang, if you will. I'm hopeful to the, this group in, in the final analysis will get within spitting distance of your goal, and that sort of promise to the voters that if we get any more, it goes to the bottom line. I think it's going to be pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. and do you think we'll know before the second reading? No. I don't think you'll know before the validation. Yeah. validation yeah. Yeah. I don't think yeah. we'll know until July. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they have well, they they supposedly have to get something. the budget passed by June 30 or things grind to a halt in Augusta, but you know, that's happened. So who knows? So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? I think that there should be language in there. I think it, it is goodwill and I think it shows that it gives us options. Um, because we just don't know. It's completely blind right, right. going in um, at that point. I I strongly agree that something should go back to the taxpayers. And so what that percentage is, is I'm not sure how to calculate that in the most um, fair way, but I do think that's what we should do. And the remainder of that going into fund balance to offset. Next year. Next year. <laughs> well, to Chris's point, I mean, it, it, in a sense, it goes to the taxpayers either way. It right. goes to the taxpayers right. Right. today or tomorrow. But I think that it will probably help us as we go forward and say, ooh, geez, you know, hitting 3% is really going to impact services in this town. So here's where we landed, but we have the anticipation that if we get relief from the state that we'll be passing that on to the community as well. Yeah. I, I kind of like that message. I think it's hard to remember a year from now, too. You know, when we're talking about, uh, remember this from Thumbnail, where it. if that happens in, you know, August, it, I don't know, I kind of live in the moment, so I think <laughs> it would feel a little better. Could you say something like, if the budget came in at 3.4% increase, could you put something in the, in the voter question that says, anything we receive that will bring us down to 3%, and then access those to fund balance or something to that. I mean, it may all go to reduce the property tax or. Well, the KISS principle ought to be front and center here. It gets complicated. I understand right. you, the sentiment of your mm -hmm. suggestion, but I think it's simple for people to understand the better. 50 50. Is that fair? Or. Well, nothing from nothing is nothing, too. Nothing from nothing is nothing. Well, right, right. I can really support 50 50. Yeah, 50 50. I can like support 50 50. Sure. Yeah, I mean, 50-50 is fine because I don't think most of the people who sh go to the polls and ask and answer this question are going to know what what it really means. I mean, they don't know what fund balance means. They don't yeah. know what 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 kind of account that that actually is. Yeah, and I would just be I would be afraid the, the blowback, political blowback, would be you promised us relief and it never came. Now it's easy for us to do exactly what we're doing now and turn around and point the finger north and say, well, Augusta didn't give us the relief, so you didn't get the relief. Mm -hmm. yeah. But again, I, I hate it. would have to be very clear and specific that, you know, this is a big if. In the yes, event that, I mean, it, that's the way the, qu yeah. the question has to be worded. And there's blank, like there's With a picture of a pie in the sky. And Bill, I kind of agree that they, they may not understand fund balance, but if it's worded so that they know that they get some relief. Maybe yeah, putting in like currencies like that. I think that they, might, they might understand the that. The harder question for me is, uh, uh, because I agree that the way the budget was structured with the items put into capital uh, budget and out of expense uh, or into expense and out of capital was the right thing to do. I'm not sure it's the right thing to do this year. Uh, right. But I think the harder <coughs> question is, you want to pass it on the first go round because yeah, once it. it fails, then the question is, why did it fail? Mm. Mm. And you're going to have you're gonna, this year. I think you'll be all over the map mm. because I think the schools already made a, a 4.9 reduced by the additional reduction in expenses that you identified at the last time we got together. It's going to put it south of 4.5 in terms of cost increase. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, re that's a really good number. That's the best number coming out of the school in a long time uh, from a cost point of view. So 
So uh, uh, I can't even predict whether people would be saying cut because it's only the school budget and the referendum. Right. <laughs> right. The, the town's already sort of done. Done. So you you become the only target in town, mm. and it seems somewhat unfair because then you're it, it's it's just uh, a crapshoot at that point. It's it's risky. And two years ago, we had enormous risk where we were talking a five hundred thousand dollar cut. Remember, and then we. And we finally reopened the budget. It's the town's budget, and we sort of worked together to try and cobble together a solution. So uh, I think the first effort uh, on the first referendum has to be our best effort. In other words, we have to have a, as, as good, even though there's some unpredictability as to how far you cut, I think you have to probably vote town and school make adjustments in this budget to go about as far as you can go. And it may even be just a what if to get, if you say, well, what if all these other things were in place, what would we have to cut so that people would know what the consequence of that was? Because Chris said earlier, it, it, the consequence could be reduced services mm -hmm. and, and uh, on both sides of the fence. And people go, well, that's not what we want. You know, we're so stuck with the, the loss of revenue from the state and unfunded mandates from PERS and whatnot being thrown at us. I mean, PERS, so... But my, my question would be, how do we know what's, when, when good enough is good enough? I mean, if it's our 3% but our three percent goal, right. and if we feel like we can hit that and that's what we're comfortable with and that's what we go out with, um, you know, I think, I, to Tom's point, I don't know if we can get to that without... In uh, implementing yeah. service cuts already at this point. So then if we get back to, I think you mentioned three and a half, if we land on that number, let's say, how do we know the voters aren't going to still turn around and say, you promised us three, it's three and a half well, now. I, think, yeah. I mean, I think, Sorry. I think and, and that is the wild card. Right. And, and I think it's all, that's why when we started about how do we package this. Right. Which is you know, really why you want to see what would 3% actually mean? Right. Even though there's certain other variables that could change that. Uh, and, and you just equitably divide up between the schools and the municipality uh, uh, what that would do and say, what, what does three look like and what does 3.5 look like? Well, I think that's, that's where, where, uh, that's where, we are. where yeah. leadership yeah. on both sides uh, need to be standing together talking about the same thing. That right. we have done our very best to get to this point. And I, that's where I think this secondary question it, it provides maybe an essential sentiment to the voters that's going to get you over the end line. Mm. Well, if our one of our big talking points always is we're, it's the outside loss of outside funding that's driving us into the situation that we're you know we're certainly not comfortable with and no one else in town is. So it seems like it a logical progression to say if that situation changes, we would like to make that. Uh, an advantage to the voter versus just saying, oh, well, yeah, it might, you know, I, I, and there's there's a certain amount of, I don't know what word to use, but it's kind of like political or it's grandstanding or it's fake or whatever, but it's also real and it's also a possibility that we could actually provide some relief. So I think addressing it is not a bad thing. Yeah, you know, Chris, I think, I think we're based on, on the soft landing going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's probably not the conversation for this year. But at some point, I think we, you know, if our revenues, if we don't get back revenues, you know, at some point in time, we may have to have those conversations about choices people may want to make between what they consider essential services across the board for everything, mm -hmm. and what they're willing to pay in taxes. And you know, we really, and that's why I think where we started is about maybe that's some of the work this group or a group mm -hmm. can start doing. I mean, we 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 know what they said when we talked about the pay for bags on. Yeah, that was certainly it. But I mean, I, I think to, to just flat out say we'll never ever change any service levels we have. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. It, I'm not, not a big, on either side. It's yeah. just, it's just we should ask folks and say, hey, here's here's your choice. You can either, you know, so. which, which in essence is how the budgets are typically structured, right? We've got the level services budget. We've got the uh, request for new investments. Um, and the school has yeah. a different another tier on top of that. But so I, I mean, I guess the question I would have is. Um, then part of that discussion would be for a baseline is if we had level services with no increased investment 
uh, I'm not saying that new programming would come from internal sources or whatever, but with no additional investments, what percentage are we looking at as a tax revenue for a complete level services budget? For the whole, for the whole, for the whole. Across the board. Yep. And then look at what that tax rate is going to be, what we project that, project that tax rate. Because if that comes in at 3.8 or 3.9 or whatever it is, then that's, to me, that's the discussion that we're at, is do we put this out at 3.9 at level services, or do we go lower and we make the decision to reduce services in the hopes that we pass it the first time around? I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things you're willing to die. I mean, like, this is a totally uneducated guess. Somewhere between yeah. three and three and a half, we probably could do anything more than that, then it becomes, who knows? I mean, I think, so I mean, I think there's a sweet spot. Right. And, and so we need to think about that and how do we package that? How do we talk about it? How do we have the communication? So on the, I think on Tom's suggestion about if there is a miracle and we do get this Hail Mary returned to us, um, I think that, I mean, is everybody okay with sort of the concept about some language in there about sharing it back? and? Mm -hmm. I, I know, I know, that's, no, no, not, no, I, that's no, not your... No, no, yeah, I'll, I'll go with it, that's yeah. fine, I'm not sure. Sharing, sharing all of it back? No, no, I think sharing it... I think it's 50, 50, 50, okay. yeah. And I, I think Bill's point's a great point about it just has to be really simple for them to understand that that's... Yeah, yeah we'll come up with that. With as yeah. simple language as possible. Any additional like, revenue will be split 50-50 between fund balance and tax credit. The council tabled the... Uh, election ballot or the warrant at the last meeting, so we'll come back to you May 3rd just to be approved that night to make sure we have it printed and ready. Um, so that language will come forward mm -hmm. to you and um, be added, I guess, as an amendment that night. So we'll, we'll collaborate and, and come up with that language. So maybe at the budget forum, an important thing, if we bring this up as a, as a talking point, is to let the community understand that not only when we say 50-50, it all, it, at the end of the day, it's always coming back mm -hmm. to you. Some, just some this year in FY18 and the rest in FY19. Right. This it really is. is years, not who it's going to. It's right. Years. Right. It's it right. doesn't mean that we're then going to, like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, run yeah, off and replace all the windows. You'll have to qualify that it's this group that will be recommending that to be added, because at that point, the council will not have voted on it. I can't imagine the council will be opposed, I but um, I think it's not definite until that vote happens on the following, uh, following week. May I, I think if you present that as a, I mean, I can't see us not supporting if you presented it as the finance chair to, for an amendment, this is what we talked about, here's where we're at, I, I can't see there being opposition to that. But. No, just, yeah. just need to be careful how you introduce it, that yeah. this committee will be yeah. recommending that. Recommending. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's helpful. Thank you for that. And, then, and Chris, I think you brought up the question, which is, you know, probably, you know, is, and I think Bill talked to it too, this year to be pulling the stuff from capital to operating. It is a policy we sort of talked about, probably good business practice. Yeah. Um, and probably something we should do. Um, what's everybody's feeling about this year? Um, and what is that? What's the total, Tom, that sort of falls into that bucket of in that three to four hundred thousand dollar range or something like that? Yeah, the difference between these two numbers here. Where are you, Tom? Um, tab 9, page 19. Right. So yeah. in the current budget year, yeah. we are appropriating $264,000 to support capital projects. The proposed yeah. budget has 559. Mm -hmm. So one way to look at it is the difference I mean, that's new money this year. That's Tom, this is separate though from the actual migration of the budget. It, like on the school side, we talked about the tech refresh. Tech refresh. Yes, that's separate. This is actually appropriating funds and keeping the project in CIP, but correct, but not bonding. Funding money source is coming from Got appropriations it. rather than bonding. The difference between these two numbers is the is the extra money to be appropriated the this year. What's the items are they for the most part? What's what's the yeah. I, mean, I, I don't recall. I mean, yeah. tab six and seven. There's uh tab six and seven. Okay, what's the school funding? Okay. You fully funded the school funding software. Um for uh, the lunch 
what? Two 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 so two 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 it's more than a year. Okay. That's, that's in a different spot. It's I thought that's what I said. It's I actually, it's represented as tax revenue under the school nutrition fund. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's part of the tax request and it's an increase to the tax request. But it's not represented in either the operating budget or the um, CIP budget. It's just mm -hmm. money that wasn't budgeted in the past that was taken from fund balance. Does that, that makes sense. Thousand right there. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. So, so basically, it's so that's a, a two hundred thousand dollar thing. Exactly. Right. So basically, it's a bill that we have to pay every year, but we never budget for. And so typically, that's being paid for out of fund balance. Fund balance. So as we're using more fund balance this year, but then also planning to go back in and really tighten our projections, that puts a further squeeze on the flexibility that we would have with fund balance. So, I'm, I mean, my, I would strongly recommend that we keep the food service it's as It's like taking 200000 from fund balance. Which is exactly. which is already stretched. It's right. Exactly. Because that's exactly yeah. what that's, that's exactly what you're doing, right? And if you, if you don't raise the funds to pay for it, then that's what yeah, you're you can't take your cash. So since yeah. you already yeah. said it's a good practice to fully fund it. Well, we've acknowledged it for every year I've been at this uh, table. How many? Done it. And you don't years? want to monkey around with the fund balance. Well, it's like you know you're going to have to pay your water bill. You right. don't know exactly how much it's going to be, but you know every month it's about you know X amount of dollars, but you haven't saved any money for it. Yeah, but the challenge is going to be, of course, now going back and if we're at 3.5 or 3.6 saying this is another factor in that it's not just the 1.4 loss in revenue it's that we've moved additional, we've, we've, we're funding additional things in the operational budget that were being used <coughs> either through fund balance or other appropriations. We're appropriating funds for right. something that we didn't right. in the right. past. Which is why I think having it on the table is important because if we're looking for that, if we're looking at tax rate, and that's our goal, is to hit a certain tax rate, our certain request to the taxpayers, that's different than our our operating budget, right? Right. Yeah, in hindsight, this may not have been the year to advance those two things, but I think Julie and I both agreed that it, it, it was important for us to do what we've been talking about um, and to understand what the consequence of that is. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's now up to this group and the, uh, to figure out whether this is the time to do it. Um, I think it's important for us to continue to acknowledge it. It must be done. It's something we need to work for if we don't do it now. So, Tom, on the, on the, on the net appropriation for capital, on uh, Exhibit 8, yep. that 295.807, is that all appropriated? That difference between the budget and uh, 17 and 18? Yes. Yes. It, it's all appropriate. It's not bond. None of it's bonded. Correct. The bonding okay. is showing us uh, the under the revenue line. Some of the items that we're looking at, at least in capital equipment, are, uh, for example, 5,000, 20,000, 11,000, 19, 22,000. There is an item here for 80,000 for new furnishings, replacement, and renewal that are currently scheduled to be appropriated. I mean, I think um, Kate and I were talking about that recently as yesterday, and um, I think the funds that we use this year are scheduled to be bonded, so yeah. that's a, an offset, but then that goes to the whole discussion we had yesterday about uh, pay now, we pay later. Pay now, pay later. Right. Exactly. Right. And it's kind We're of, a, kind of in a conundrum. Yeah, and, it's kind of, and it's kind of, I mean, it's the, as we talked about, fully funding or fully budgeting the nutrition program, because we know that's the cost, is the right thing from an accounting perspective, and it should be done. Mm -hmm. Same with moving a lot of the stuff into operational should be. Um, we're just faced with a dilemma about how do we balance the scale this year. And I, I wasn't following the nutrition conversation. Were you suggesting it should stay fully budgeted the way it is? Yeah. yeah and not and not move that. Yeah. Okay. And then on the on some of the capital things, what what's sort of the general feel everybody on the table now on? Is that a last go too well? Is that uh, to me that's a different bucket. I it it yeah. does feel different. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I think very different. We, yeah. we can it's not create an argument for it. I think there's a very rational argument. The um, furnishings are. They're more we, than a year. They're more than and yeah. we'd be very careful that not mean that doesn't mean we're gonna bond it for twenty eight years. In some cases we're financing it for three years. So we're very careful 
item by item as to how that layers into our, our financing. But the fact is we're borrowing money of one sort or another for varying lengths of time. So I think we can make a, a very legitimate straight-based argument that much of that could be borrowed. It's just a different way of doing it. I agree. With Typical that. way of doing it. Yeah. It's a useful life for argument. Us. They're all got a useful life beyond one year for accounting purposes. And so it's not improper to do it the way it's been done historically, but because they are small, they're short period kind of replacement stuff that right. repeats itself, right. we've all agreed that it ought to go into uh, <coughs> the expense rather right. than capitalized. Right. But, the, but the question becomes, and again, we're moving all nutrition in, we're moving all of this other stuff in. Do we want to do half now, half next year? Do we want to do partial? Do we want to just bite the bullet and say, yep, we're doing it all this year and run the risk of it not passing? <laughs> and then and then we've got, you know, if we, if we I, guess, I guess my thing would be, if we keep it in there right now and it doesn't pass, maybe that's part of plan B. I don't know. Yeah, the, the other way to maybe overly simplify it is that if you think of the pressures on the tax rate, we've got some unique pressures. Mm -hmm. um, Clearly, the loss of 1.4 million in GPA is a the pressure we have no control over, so we've got to deal with that. Right. These other two, food service and how we fund capital, have direct pressure on the property tax. The difference is they're somewhat discretionary. Right. And so, for that reason, they're different. Um, you, so you could say, can we shoulder that entire tax shift, if you will, and pressure on the property tax all at once, or do we? We deal with the one we have to and acknowledge that we've got to work toward or maybe do the food service and not the other. Um, but it's really 2020 before we're in a position of probably addressing that again. Well, in, in yeah. For me, just sort of hearing what Chris is saying, it's much like the IT in that, you know, it's taken us three or four years to sort of make that full leap into operational, is that the is that the route we take with the nutrition? Don't do the whole is it is the it not the whole jump? Is it just part of the jump? I think the difference between between those two scenarios is that the tech refresh was already budgeted in CIP. So the funds were there, it needed to be done, the bills were coming in. Some there was money to pay the bills. What we were saying was it probably shouldn't be borrowed money to pay those bills. Right. That's true. The difference there is that in school nutrition, we don't have another place to find that money except for fund balance, which I think, to Chris's point earlier, is a little bit risky right now since we're drawing the fund balance so low. Um, I would agree that you know perhaps these appropriated amounts or the shift of $100,000 from CIP to operating in tech refresh this year in our operating budget could certainly be deferred because right. there's another way to do it and it's a rational, legitimate business way to do things. So and that's the amount that I could pass them. There's a hundred thousand that would have been in CIP this year and in, in seventeen that's now going to be in operating in eighteen. Right. Or that's the way it's proposed. But I think that, to Julie's point, it's, you know you have to be cautious about school lunch because, again, we haven't got another place to go to. We've right. got a bill coming in, and we haven't really planned to pay for that from somewhere except for from the fund surplus. Which we're already. And so maybe a drain. The, the tech part. Though. And we're limited by the state to increase the cost of the food? Or yeah, in fact, I, I don't know if I've said it to this group, but um, we've had some conversations with Peter, and he does plan to ask for a waiver to raise the prices in the schools next year um, and get them up to a level that is equivalent to what surrounding schools and high schools are paying. We're a little bit under them. But it's still, you know, it's, it's a heavily sort of supposedly subsidized Cost. Highly regulated, and but not highly subsidized. Right, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's subsidized for folks who have a lot of free and reduced lunch population. Would it be helpful to this group for perhaps Julie and I and our support folks to take all of this into consideration and come to you with kind of a package proposal? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, the, the different revenue sources we've kicked around today to see if we can legitimately get more there. Yep. We'll consider the capital and the food service piece in the co conversation. And that will still leave uh, some significant further deficit to, to get to that $2.1 million. So, yeah, um, 
that would require some further work on our part to propose how we're going to do that. Other time, I did be good. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I do see the food services a little bit differently, and I, and I understand what you're saying, but it is a cost of what you do. We have been paying for it under fund balance all along. I mean, that's that's it just reduces the fund balance you roll forward. That to me is different than a capitalization policy, and. I'm a little confused. I thought we'd started moving some of these things over, but we, I know we worked yeah. on the policy last year. Is this the first year that we really are no. set to kind of... We actually started it last that's year what I because... Thought. So, because so we're somewhat inconsistent. Most in the prior years that... I don't have it here. The $264,090 that we appropriated for 2017, in the past it's typically been zero. So we started, we leave it in capital, but instead of bonding it or something like right. that, we're right. appropriating these capital items. Uh, maybe come up those recommendations. Yep. And then for everybody on a time check, I know we only have an hour scheduled, I think, today. Are we, is everybody? I just put an hour just to sort of keep everyone on their toes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't update my hand. <laughs> optimism for just. Would you want a 3.0 and a 3.5 scenario? Of the total we got to find. Well, just well, I, yeah. Again, I, I'm, 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 I'm. First, this is my personal opinion. I'm hesitant to just put numbers out there without knowing the impact, because if we go to a 3.0 and it, and it, I want to know what the reductions would be in exactly. terms of. Exactly. See, if you go yeah. to 3.5, you could say this is the consequence. Of this. Let, let right. us get but if you go to 3.0, there's a further consequence. Let us get you to a lower point. Okay. It's not going to be all the way there, but it's a point that we can comfortably bring them a conversation yeah. and uh, then we'll see where the conversation goes from there. Good. We're all nodding. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Is there a, a, do we want to have another meeting prior to the next, I mean we're running out of time. What, what <laughs> I feel like that? Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, not before the forum. No, well, we have the another forum on, two, on Wednesday Wait. and then we have our second Wait. reading on Thursday. I think so that you guys, you guys are really, I mean, this is next week, we'll be Thursday, doing, so you'll be noodling all of this, so that, that okay. process. And we did have scheduled, on the 27th, we did have a meeting scheduled, and we moved it up to this date because of the timeline. I don't know if maybe we keep it's it. still in my calendar. It's still in my calendar. It's probably <laughs> good, it's probably good to help afterwards, and we may get some feedback one way or another. After the forum? After the forum. Yeah. Yeah, if everyone's there. So mm. keep the meeting on the 27th? Thursday afternoon. What, what, so what happens, I'm, I'm going to ask a, a rhetorical question, I kind of already know the answer to this, but what happens after the second reading and further adjustments need to be made? So the school board will need to pass the budget, the school budget, at second reading next week. Mm -hmm. They will then deliver that to, the, to Tom to become our new and improved version of the our department and the municipal budget. But then obviously that bottom line is not set until the council takes their second reading and votes. Once that's done and the town council has said, here's what we'd like to see happen in the school budget, then we have a meeting the night after that and we reallocate those changes. So, I mean, it, in a sense we have to, like any other town department, we have to create a legal document that becomes part of the municipal budget that you guys can then act on. I just wanted to be clear that after second reading, there's still room. There's a discussion. there's a meeting with the school board the next yeah. night, and typically that meeting is in response to right. where you've been well, planned. I don't see the school board's action in second reading doesn't matter, but no. the council's action in second reading is really the control of these. Right. The school board's second reading is in, in an effort to present you with a legally vetted position, right. Right. portion of your municipal budget. Yep. And I kind of hate to ask this question, but I... Well, don't. <laughs> if we come to, if we say, okay, this is what the reductions will be if we're at a three and a half, and this is what the reductions will be if we're at three percent, is there any, do you have any preference for what portion of that would be school or, or non-school, or do you leave that up to us to... Well, we talk about that on the 27th, I guess, right? And I guess you guys will work on that. One town, one budget. I think that's yeah. Tom and Julie. 50-50, is that what you're saying? To, to, to <laughs> think it's 70-30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. 
So <laughs> you anyway, that's why I said half the people are laughing. <laughs> why is that? Oh, no, it's, 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 it's not a you just sad laugh. Who's getting <laughs> See, and we're running behind. Any anything else, anybody? Have? So we we will keep meeting next Thursday. Next Thursday. Two and Thursday. Uh, two was it for um, you guys are going to connect and then reach out to us for material? I'll oh, circulate the presentation so you have those <coughs> available to. What's the next date Thursday? next Thursday? Twenty seventh at two two p.m. I have. If that's yeah, correct. that's what I have. Okay. Um, and then and then Jody, you and I can get together. And maybe we'll circulate whatever we come up with. Um, to everybody, so yeah, we're here to help support. As you mm -hmm. see yeah, in the presentation, I feel like last year there was a lot more support. There is. <laughs> okay. But no, we just I'm gonna, I'm gonna send yeah. you both what what I presented for the first, what Kate and I presented for the first reading. Tom's going to send you what we co-presented at the town council first reading, and then I'll also send you the leadership council school board presentation, so you can pick and choose what you like. Uh, and I will okay, send good. the That's joint presentation to Jody. You're going to have four presentations to, to look at. Yeah, you're right. going to take the slide from everyone. We'll just take from everyone. One, uh, one housekeeping matter. Uh, last year, as I recall, there were eight of us up on the stage. It was. George and I, Ruth and Kate, Jody and Sean, and I think the two council, the council chair and school board chair. chair. Oh, right. right. They didn't really have any involvement. Uh, we have a combination for eight, but we can go with six, and so that's really just kind of a housekeeping thing. I think we should have one in the back of the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I you would have to talk to the next. chairs because the rest of the team is down in the... I don't know that the chair of the by. school board or the chair of the town council had much to add. Right. No, I didn't speak. I can remember Sean, Donna maybe. I know, that's what I'm saying. You need to talk to the no, chair no, of the town council. No, we want to get out on time. Sean Mike, which may be a reason that it's six, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not here, you don't get a vote. Right? Okay. I'm sure it's going to be more clean, actually. Right. Sure, sure, There's enough room to pull two more chairs up, but we'll plan for the six of us up there. I think that's fine. So did, you, did Colette tell you that we were thinking about seeing on these risers in the front? She didn't tell me you're thinking. She told me you decided. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference. She knows how to Where are you going to do the uh, a library or the? What, what? Uh, the cafeteria. Cafeteria. Yeah. Cafeteria? Yeah. Yeah, so the budget form is. Yeah. Yeah. Green and red card. So 6, 7 p.m. next Wednesday at the Wentworth Cafeteria. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any comments? One of the comments? Okay. Before public comment, actually, Peter, um, if I'm looking at this correctly, the 27th is your second reading. We've got a finance committee meeting uh, that day at 6. Where is that? So the other side, Chamber A, I believe. Yeah. Or Chamber B. Uh, okay. Chamber yeah, we'll A. Chamber B. Okay. Yeah, I know. So those are some well, I don't know that Chamber B is a great option because we also have that night the calendar issue. We need oh, the full. We already we moved them once, so I feel that might just have to be a crowded. It'll just have yeah. to be they a crowded meeting. We knew that there would be conflicts. Uh, we didn't know what would, that there'd be controversy on your agenda. Well, I don't think they did either. But <laughs> well, <laughs> not today. We can move to my conference room. I'll check on the availability. But, uh, that may be best. Well, are you? What's your six to seven? Uh, I've got down six to eight. Oh. I think they have presentations. We have presentations, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, so you oh. guys are still doing the department yeah, vetting thing. Oh, that's going to take some space. Yeah. And you, you have the late start issue coming back around? Yeah. Second reading. Yeah. yeah, that'll be... So do we... Do we totally we fine, Bill. Okay. <laughs> do we want to try active discussion? change finance, or do we want to look for a different venue? I'm comfortable either way. So. Do you think the library would be available? Or we could try to change. No, you can't change. No, you can't do that. No. You can go somewhere where they don't know where that meeting is. It's 27th. Sanctuary. I'll get back to you all. But I think it's probably ill-advised for us to try to share the space here. It would also just be loud. It would be disruptive. Annoying. People standing in line outside. Just like loud and boisterous and no respect for any, anything else going on. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'll communicate with the talk to the Okay. Public input? Yep. Yes. 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 Absolutely. Three minutes. I'm going to put a timer on this. I did, actually. When he, when he initially said public Started comment, I didn't start by it. That's good. Oh, time's up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
like I said, I don't have any issues with anyone at the table except maybe one counselor. He's not here. <laughs> oh, he just spoke up. <laughs> <laughs> I won't make your name. So. 252. Uh, just a bunch of several bullet points here in the budget. I mean, we had the goal of 3% or around 3%. Yeah. So we had, had the initial reading and it came in way higher than that. So now it's a month or so later. I think there have been some direction at that time. When we talk about one town, one budget, and the superintendent acknowledges that that is two thirds of the budget. And the council seems to keep talking as if they're equal at 50 percent, 50 percent. It's not, it's, it's two thirds of the budget. So if they have cut, it's got to come from the elephant in the room. Um, and I think, you know, it's not fair to the, to the school board to wait for a second reading and then have to figure out how to cut to a three percentage point. It sounds like today we'd like to be in the three percent range of three and a half percent. There's a long ways to go. As Tom said, it's over two million dollars. Um, and so I think the council is remiss in not coming up with a number. And also we talk about the, the school budget and and what we need to spend at a minimum. But when we look at at least the way it's reported in the paper, surrounding communities will look at the school budgets and we'll see two, three, three and a half percentage point increase. And we're always seem to be much higher than that. So I think that's that's a reality. Um, A minute to spare. That was pretty good. I left it for you, Chris. Oh, awesome. Shall I go now? <laughs> <laughs> I get more than three minutes, though. That's the, that's not fair. So, it's not equitable. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I don't want to thank. I want to thank the uh, superintendent uh, with her candor. Look, and she's come on board, and she's other things that we would never possibly hear from our former. Thank you for staying engaged. You're keeping us on us. You're keeping us on our toes. Mm -mm. Hi, can I ask Larry to stop into HR and fill up payroll information? A way you can make this all go away is since we've already put 2.1 on fund balances from the, the school side. If you just take two and a half, two and a half million from the, the, the town side, voila, we've probably got some nice number. Everyone can go home and uh, have some meetings. Actually, I have a, I've, I've got a counter proposal from finance. We're going to have targeted tax based on last last letter, last same letter, and I think we're going to start with H. <laughs> That's what I'm going to propose. Is targeted tax increases, if we could work something like that out, that'd be great. I don't think it'll get by the finance chair. That's all right. Are you <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, duh. Yeah. Not to mention the state constitution, but that is detailed details. All right, everybody, thank you. <laughs>